na 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 Smack and Robin across the face. Because Robin says, I think I need antibiotics for my cold. About to say cold. And Batman's like, Shmack! It's a virus! So why is he smacking Robin? Let's find out. So today we're going to discuss the first part of the immune system. So beginning thoughts about the immune system. First of all, a simple cough or... <coughs> or a sneeze, ew, expels sputum, potentially releasing viruses and bacteria into the air. Our bodies are surrounded by millions of viruses and bacteria and protozoa and other nasty little critters on a daily basis. So how are we not constantly sick and dying every two minutes? And how is our body equipped to defend ourselves from these potential invaders? So the immune system is how our body defends itself against harmful invaders. It maintains homeostasis in our body by keeping us alive. Homeostasis means maintaining an internal balance, meaning everything's good. So if I get cold, I shiver and it heats me up. If I get really hot, I sweat and it helps to cool me down. So maintaining homeostasis is very important for our lives. So just what is the immune system? So without immunity, all of the bacteria and viruses and protozoa and other microbes, as well as fungi in the environment, would kill us. These are a couple types of different viruses and bacteria that you may find that could potentially cause us harm. So we have Streptococcus pneumoniae right here. This is what causes strep throat. We have our HIV virus that we're going to go in depth with, and you'll also have a lab over this. We have Zygomyces fungi. This is a parasitic fungus. And then down here, we have a mosquito that can transmit an array of diseases. They carry West Nile virus, malaria, and much more. So the immune system is composed of several different organs all working together. We have our, oops, we have our tonsils and adenoids right here. We have lymph nodes, and those are scattered throughout our entire body. The thymus right here, which is responsible for producing T cells. We have our spleen. We have Peyer's patches. We have the appendix. We have lymph vessels. And we also have bone marrow, which might surprise you, but it's very important in our immune system. So our lymph nodes. This is a close-up of a lymph node. It's a small bean-shaped structure that filters the lymphatic fluid in our bodies. They contain special cells that can trap cancer cells or bacteria that are traveling through the lymphatic system. This is why they talk about cancer metastasizing into the lymph nodes. Once cancer actually gets into the lymph nodes, because they're all connected by those lymph vessels, it spreads to other regions of the body. That's why it's so dangerous when a woman gets breast cancer if it spreads into their lymph nodes. And we have lymph nodes along our armpits. So once it spreads there, it's very easy for that cancer to spread to other places of our body where we have lymph nodes. So when you get sick, your lymph nodes might get swollen or sore. So when you have a sore throat or you're beginning to get sick, you'll go to the doctor. And a lot of times they'll do this. And if you're sick, your lymph glands right here will be swollen. A lot of times they'll feel underneath your armpit too, and if your lymph nodes under your armpit are swollen, that usually indicates you're sick as well. We have the thymus. So the thymus is found right here, looks like this. It's a small organ located behind the breastbone, and this is where your T cells mature. So remember that T is for thymus. So T is for thymus. We also have our spleen. This is the largest of the immune system organs. Spleen is located right here. It's located in the upper left portion of our abdomen. It helps control the amount of blood in your body, and it also destroys old and damaged blood cells. Bone marrow is actually one of the most important constituents of your immune system. 
we have this yellow tissue inside of our bones that makes white blood cells, which become lymphocytes. Lympho is referring to our lymphatic system, and site means, think about it, it means cell. So right here, we have our bone marrow, and it produces red blood cells, as well as many different types of white blood cells. It produces lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophil, basophil, and neurophil, as well as platelets. The lymphocytes are these small white blood cells that play a very large role in defending the body against disease. There are two types of lymphocytes. We have B cells and T cells. And remember, T is for thymus. A well-organized defense. So the human body has two different types of immunity. We have innate immunity, which occurs naturally in the human body. The word innate means that you're born with it. Just like all baby mammals, us included, are born with the innate nature to suckle, meaning that we nurse from our mother's breast. We are all born with that innate behavior. No one teaches us how to do that. We just know that we have to do that to survive. And that's something innate that you are born with. The second type of immunity is called acquired. The word acquired means to obtain. I acquire money by working. I acquired my car. I acquired my husband. I acquired my clothes. So those are things that I'm not born with, but I acquire them. Same thing for our immune system. It is something that is developed by the body after exposure. So this past weekend, not that I had much fun, but I went into CVS and I got my flu shot right here in my arm, which is still sore because I don't want to catch the flu. So now I have an acquired immunity for the flu virus this year and I won't get sick. At least I hope not. The immune system responds to invaders by recognizing, attacking, and destroying invading antigens. An antigen is an invader that can harm the body. And the body has three lines of defense. The first two lines of defense are nonspecific, meaning it treats any Joe Schmo bacteria, virus, protozoa all the same way. They don't get any special treatment. Everybody gets treated the same. So that's nonspecific. Specific means that they treat that one in a very specific way. So our first line of defense is nonspecific. Again, meaning that the body is going to react to any pathogen, which means a disease-causing agent, in the same way, whether it's a virus, a bacteria, anything. So these are our physical barriers and defenses against invading antigens. The first physical barrier is the skin, and this is the most important bar barrier against invaders. Our skin physically blocks things from getting into our bodies. It blocks bacteria, viruses, and other pathogens from getting into the major organs of our body. Our skin also secretes oil, and it secretes sweat. These are both acidic, and they kill a lot of bacteria. The next type of our first line of defense are our eyes and our mouths. Those secrete tears and saliva. Both tears and saliva contain an enzyme called lysozyme that breaks down the cell walls of bacteria and kills them. Our nose and throat are also part of our first line of defense, and they secrete mucus that helps to trap invaders. So if you think about when you're first coming down with something, you start getting kind of phlegmy. Your nose starts running, you're like, <sighs> and you get tickle in your nose, and sometimes you'll sneeze. Well, that tickle are actually tiny hairs called cilia that are beating that mucus upwards, and we cough or sneeze it out, like this guy right here. Kind of nasty. This reflex actually clears the foreign material before it enters our lungs. Now sometimes it does get into our lungs, and we'll talk about what happens to that a little bit later on in this lecture. So mucus that is not coughed or sneezed out of the body is usually swallowed. 
Nasty, I know, but you know you've all done it. You're sitting in class, or you're with your boyfriend, or your girlfriend, or your parents, and you're kind of flummy, and you go, <sighs> and all of a sudden, you have this nasty, salty, loogie in your mouth. And you have two options. You can either hawk up that loogie and spit it on the floor in front of someone you don't want to do that in front of, or you could swallow it. And so you know all of us have done this little bit. And I look around and mm -hmm. and we swallow it. So what happens when we swallow that nasty loogie? Well, most of it's actually broken down in the stomach, and any type of bacteria or virus typically is killed. Now, that doesn't happen 100% of the time, but the majority of the time, all of those viruses and bacteria are killed because if you remember, our stomach is extremely acidic and it has a lot of enzymes that break things down. Stay tuned for our next lecture where we're going to discuss the second and the third lines of defense of the body. So stay tuned next time, nerdlings. I'll see you guys soon.